government has been defending itself against claims that cuts outlined in the spending review will hit the poorest hardest. In this region, 26% of children live in what's called relative poverty, which means their families live on less than 60% of the average wage. Many depend on the state for support. In Elodie Harper's report, three families speak about their fears for the future. Three families with three different stories, but all are worried about how cuts to key areas will affect them. Chantal Charvet from Suffolk used to run a successful business, but nine years ago her second child Harry was born severely disabled. She gave up work to care for him. Now Chantal and her two children live on £11,000 a year in benefits. I would love to go out to work again, but who's going to care for my son? Who's going to be the one to go and pick him up when he falls sick? You can get four, five, six calls a day from the school. The welfare budget will be cut by £18 billion. Chantal is worried that if carers' allowance is incorporated into other benefits, her income could drop further. Well, if everything rings true to what we've heard, it could be by as much as £3,000 a year, which to most people working probably wouldn't sound like a lot, but it means that we'll have to exist on roughly about £8,000 a year. This hostel in Kings Lynn provides accommodation for families on the housing waiting list. But with the changes brought in by the government spending review, when they do get a home, there's no guarantee that it will be for life. New tenants in social housing will also have to pay 80% of the market rate in rent. The National Housing Federation says tenants could end up paying £9,000 more a year. Mandy Thrower is staying at St James's Hostel with her three children. She's worried that when she does get a home, it will be very expensive. Because the girls need clothes, Leon need clothes, uh, food, electric, gas, and that one do get a place. And the little ones will go without less, won't they? They'll have to have less, and that be the well, that be the kids what suffer. Kate Maguire is a single parent to four-year-old Oscar. She's studying for a degree at the University of East Anglia and is worried that a 40% cut to the higher education budget will threaten the free nursery the university provides. She's also fearful about Oscar's schooling. Cuts to public services and to um, city council and county council budgets are going to really impact on our lives. Um, I really worry about how it's going to impact on him initially with his primary education. I know everybody has to tighten their belts in times of austerity, um, but I feel that uh, the poor and the vulnerable are being unfairly targeted. The government says cuts are essential and strongly denies it has targeted vulnerable people. Fairness is also about making sure that people who do the right thing and who work hard um, are rewarded for that. And at the moment, you know, there's a lot of families who work extremely hard but then find people who are on benefits end up taking home more than they do. And I think that's unfair and changing that part of the system will actually make it more fair and save money. The full impact of the cuts will not become clear for months, but many families in our region are already fearing the worst. Elodie Harper, Anglia News. Well, still to come on the programme, the Friday football preview and the weekend weather forecast. Plus, A mother from Southend whose cancer was misdiagnosed 20 times by doctors has died. Catherine Watkins was repeatedly told she had gallstones until doctors spotted the illness two months ago. The hospital have conceded there was little they could do because the cancer was in an advanced stage. Shortly before Catherine died, she renewed her wedding vows with her husband, Bob. Police in Essex have been carrying out a major operation on the A12 today, targeting motoring offences and travelling criminals. 181 vehicles were stopped and checked and two people arrested. One lorry was seized under the Proceeds of Crime Act. Laura Burns reports. This Romanian van is one of nearly 200 vehicles pulled over by Essex police today. The driver was caught using a mobile phone. And when stopped, this officer noticed something far more suspicious. These in particular purport to be Romanian driving documents, but uh, as you can see on there, there's no photo. We've got a little stick man being drawn where the photo should be. It's part of a major operation on the A12 around Chelmsford today. Anyone suspected of committing crime or a motoring offence was brought here to Boreham Services. To see how it worked, I was invited out on patrol with one of the officers. His car doesn't have automatic number plate recognition technology, so he was relying on instinct and experience. The first stop was a nearby roundabout to monitor passing vehicles. With nothing to see there, it was back out onto the road. 
Within minutes, he decided to pull over this lorry on the basis of suspected metal theft and driving too close to the car in front. It was brought back to the services, where everything was found to be legal, but the driver was cautioned about tailgating. What we've done now is plateaued. Um, we've still got some key routes, the A12, the A13, the A127, which are our, what we call our problem routes, and we're really working hard to keep casualties down on those routes. The A12 recently sent a little blip We've had a number of real high-profile um, incidents which tragically have had some tragic consequences. Anyone caught speeding, not wearing their seatbelt or using their mobile phone has been brought into this casualty reduction trailer where they've been shown a video about road safety and also given a talk to try and change their attitude towards the road. As for the Romanian men, they did eventually manage to find proper documents and the driver left with a £60 fine. And hopefully, like other drivers stopped today, a better awareness of road safety and the measures police will go to to keep the county safe. Laura Burns, Anglia News. Now, it's a colour that can shock. It's a colour that certainly makes people sit up and take notice. It's a colour that Wilsey's got on his tie this evening, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with a bit of pink, Jago. <laughs> and great Yarmouth Football Club agree because they've used it on their strip as part of a campaign to help cancer charities this season. And it's gone down well with one of the game's biggest characters. Donovan Blake reports. They've been worn for one-off games in rugby and for specific competitions in cricket. Now great Yarmouth Football Club has taken the plunge to wear pink for a season. The eye-catching strip has been a feature on their travels in the Eastern Counties League. Clacton, the latest destination last weekend. Their bold move to support cancer and breast cancer charities has been backed by broadcaster and football commentator John Motson. He was a guest at a fundraising dinner in Yarmouth last night. And although pink may be a surprising standout colour in football, Motty doesn't mind it. Everton, of course, are playing in pink in their uh, reserve kit this year. I did a match at uh, Birmingham City the other week and they were playing in pink and it didn't offend me at all. In fact, I thought it looked very smart. So uh, no problem with that. I think it stands out. Um, and certainly the kit that uh, this club wears, you couldn't mistake it, could you? As commentators go, um, I'm one of those that doesn't really like doing teams in stripes because it's very hard to see the numbers on the back. Motson was joined by longtime friend Ricky George, the former Hereford player whose winning goal against Newcastle nearly 40 years ago created one of the biggest shocks in FA Cup history. And the club, which houses the oldest active football stand in the world, are grateful for their joint support. The football club's chairman, Stephen Brawley, um, is something that's close to his heart, very good friend of the football club and a good friend of his uh, has been suffering recently uh, and we thought it would be a good idea to try and raise awareness of cancer in general um, so we introduced the pink appeal. Great Yarmouth play at home tomorrow but they've yet to win in front of their own fans in their traditional yellow and black. Maybe it's time to employ the pink shock tactic for every game. Donovan Blake, Anglia News. It's a good look. A good look. <laughs> you can see a longer interview with John Motson on our website at www.itv.com forward slash Anglia. Norwich City.